It's not like Hubble or JWST or these other space missions where you get pretty pictures back and you, you can look at them in ooh and ah. It's, it's actually measuring the positions of stars in the sky, their velocities, literally if they're moving towards or away from the Earth, their color, their brightness. The thing is, it's doing this for nearly two billion objects, and it's doing it at a precision that has never been done before. So it's been weird because it's just data, and yet that data has given us a more amazing picture in some ways of what's going on in our own Milky Way galaxy than some of the actual photos have. Simply measuring the positions and the changes in the positions of these stars over time it gives you a lot more than just their distance. It turns out you can start to see structure in our galaxy just by seeing how far away stars are. We can infer what the shape of the galaxy is. But there's more than that because as you're watching the stars move, you can measure those velocities. You can say, oh, this star is moving a teeny, teeny bit in our sky, but it's really far away. So it's really screaming past us at like a million miles an hour, some ridiculous speed. And you can start to learn about stars that way, like stars that are in the disk of the galaxy. How do they move around the galaxy? Stars that are outside, there's a halo of stars around us. How are those moving? And on top of that, like, like there's ever a top to what Gaia can do. We can see motions of stars if they're actually two stars orbiting each other, what's called a binary star. That motion in many of these systems can be measured. And if you do that, you can get the masses of the stars. And if one of them is a black hole, you can figure that out too. And in fact, I believe there have been three black holes, including the closest one to the sun, that have been discovered because of Gaia data. They're called yeah. BH1, BH2, and BH3. We know that there are tens of millions of black holes like this in our galaxy, but they're black. They're hard to see, and you can only detect them by their effect on stuff around them. If they're gobbling down matter, that material gets hot and very bright. It may be pulling down material from that star and blasting out radiation. But if it's orbiting another star, it's not producing any light, and you can only see it by the motion of that star. And, and a few have been found that way, and a lot more are going to be in the next few years, I'm sure. So Gaia's helping us find objects that we didn't know were there before, like black holes. And what else? One of the surprises that came out of Gaia is that they were finding stars that appeared to be moving in the same way. They're moving at the same speed and in the same direction in the sky. And there's they started calling those stellar streams. It's not like you see a line of stars in the sky. Some might be in that part of the sky, some might be in that part of the sky, because we might be in the middle of them. So when you map them on the sky, you see them in a line. And all moving in the same direction. And why would they, they do that? And it turns out there are several reasons. One is that stars form in gigantic gas clouds. So you can get lots of stars forming together. Uh, those stars can all be bound together gravitationally, which means they all kind of orbit each other in a cluster. Now, over time, the gravity of the galaxy can pull that cluster apart. And when it does that, it stretches it out and it becomes like this line of stars that then orbit us. These streams aren't necessarily obvious at all, but they pop right out of the Gaia data. And as they studied them, they realized that what we're seeing are leftover remnants of entire galaxies that our Milky Way is eating. There are lots of little galaxies, and if one gets too close, our galaxy urgh, pulls it apart like taffy and eats it. And the remnant stars of that galaxy can still be moving around inside of ours. Wow, that's that's so cool. I mean, I think what's the most amazing thing to me about Gaia, it's the same thing as when we went to uh, Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus with the Voyager spacecraft, and we saw them in the sky, and they were these blurry objects. Then when we got there, it was just so much more detailed than we had imagined. And the same thing is showing up in our galaxy with Gaia.